When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who'd drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you've kept the best wine until now. Friends, we gather in the name of God, whose Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, the Lord's be with you. It's wonderful to be able to welcome you to our digital service of Holy Communion today. My name is Debbie Powell and I'm Associate Priest at St Mary's Chalcombe and St Stephen's Lansdowne. And it's wonderful to welcome you to be uh, to be together uh, in my home and celebrate the communion together, much as the early church did. We may be actually in different homes, unlike them, <clears throat> but we find ourselves uh, uh, together in the Spirit of God. Today we continue the Epiphany season and the liturgy can be found on St Stephen's website uh, and in the description below this service. Uh, if you're looking on the St Stephen's website, that's www.stephensbath.org.uk and it's on the services page. Uh, Andrew Avramenko, our curate, will be joining me later in the service, reading and preaching. And I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say today. I'm grateful too for to others who have recorded themselves in their own homes to contribute to this, uh, this service. Unlike the professional setups, we're not isolated in a studio and we're in the midst of life in our homes. And there may be background noises in some of the recordings, so please do ignore that. As I said, this is a communion service and we know that God is both inside and outside of time and space. It's our belief that he is with us, even though we're not together physically. So when we come to the sharing of the bread and the wine, you might like to have some bread and wine with you uh, to partake at the same time and share in our meal together. If that doesn't feel right for you, uh, accept that I take communion on all our behalves. So let's begin by praying together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Though we are scattered in our own homes around the world, we come together as God's family to pray for the unity of Christ's church at this time of Epiphany and for the renewal of our common life. God is gentleness and compassion. So in penitence and faith, let us come before God and confess our failure to accept his love and to share it with others. Lord, you share your love with every people, yet so often we draw limits of race and creed. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you immerse yourself in love of life. And so often we hold back in fear and in shame. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you change the water into wine and so often we refuse to let our hearts be moved. Lord, 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So God of all mercy, who has reconciled the world to himself by sending the Holy Spirit to breathe love within us and between us, by the ministry of reconciliation entrusted by Christ to his church, receive his pardon and his peace to stand before him in his strength alone. Amen. So as forgiven people, let's say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And a prayer for today, the Collect. Grateful for the glory revealed at this time, through God made flesh, let us pray. Lord of the wedding day, passion of joining and spirit of festival, take our hearts of stone and flood them with new wine, that we might savour ordinary miracles given to sense and taste through Jesus Christ, the winemaker. Amen. We're going to have our readings now. Uh, first we'll hear from Rita Clare from St Stephen's Church. She'll be followed by Andrew who will then preach for us. The reading today is from the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verses 6 to 10. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Then the angel said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. At this, I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, Do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out, and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. 
When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they remained there a few days. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words that I speak be the words that you want me to speak, God. And may the words that are heard be the words that you want to be heard. In the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Tell me, tell me now, how do I feel? Those who came before me lived through their vocations from the past until completion. They'll turn away no more. And still, I find it so hard to say what I need to say. So sung Bernard Sumner of the band Blue Order in their song Blue Monday. Did you know that last Monday was called Blue Monday? It was. And it wasn't. Let me explain. Back in 2005, a travel company commissioned a psychologist at Cardiff University to do some work on what would be the best day of the year to book a holiday so they could target their advertising. Dr Cliff Arnold came up with Blue Monday as being the most depressing day of the year and one for the travel agency to focus its advertising on. Now, although there's no credible evidence to show that one day in particular can increase the risk of people feeling depressed, there is something about Blue Monday that rings true and explains why the idea has spread across the world. In this third week of the new year that we've just had, the blessed effects of resting over Christmas have probably worn off for most of us. The days are still short and the nights are still long, and the enticing prospect of long summer days and even a holiday are for most people a long way off. And that is true every year, but more so this year. At the same time Dr Arnold was coming up with the Blue Monday concept, I was preparing to marry my wife, Elaine. We could have waited to marry in the summer, but we decided to give ourselves, our family and our friends, an excuse to party and eliminate the post-Christmas blues. We married on the 21st of January 2006. Celebrating 15 years of marriage this week, is one huge and welcome blessing for me and Elaine. Lockdown may have changed how we celebrated, but it didn't change the blessing. The Gospel reading for today is also focused around a wedding. The guests there celebrated with wine, just as our guests did too. But most missed the greatest blessing that took place in their midst. Jesus turning water into wine, his first miracle. There is so much that we could unpick from this reading. For instance, what is it with the way in which Jesus talks to his mother? If I talked to my mother like that, I'd have got a clip round the ear. And why was something so apparently so frivolous as providing more wine for a wedding? Why was it worthy of being Jesus' first miracle? Indeed, why did Jesus perform such a miracle at all? 
but also perplexing, at least it was for me, is how on earth did the party host and the guests not realise? Surely they would have picked up on the chatter and the reaction of the servants. Why Jesus talks as he does to his mother Mary follows a pattern throughout his earthly ministry, and in many respects it's a very human reason. Many, if not most of us, like to do things when we want to do them, not when we're told. And there is something of that in Jesus at the wedding reception. But in this case, Jesus isn't intending to be rude. That's more a case of how we see it through our 21st century British lens. What Jesus is doing, as he does again later in his ministry, is to show that he doesn't act according to the instigation, instigation or agenda of other people. At the wedding, as elsewhere, there is a gap of time between the request to act and Jesus acting. And it's once Jesus has distanced himself from the original request that he can more ably demonstrate that he is acting according to when he, God the Father and the Holy Spirit, judge, is the right time to do so. But when Jesus did decide to act, when Jesus decided to perform a miracle only God could perform, why did he not start by healing someone or raising someone from the dead instead of turning water into wine? Well, there's hints of why in the timing and the quality of the wine that he produces. Normally, as the reading says, people would have drunk the best wine first, with the host knowing that by the time they got to the cheaper wine, they'd be too drunk to notice. Instead, Jesus produces wine of the finest quality, far outstripping the cheap wine the steward had run out of, but also the fine wine served at the beginning. Another hint is in the amount of wine Jesus produces. Each of the six stone jars would have held between 20 and 30 gallons of water, as it says in the reading. I'll save you from doing the maths. Jesus produced between 120 and 180 gallons of wine way more than could possibly have been needed or expected. What Jesus was doing was fulfilling the Old Testament prophecy of God's new age coming and beginning. You see, in the Old Testament, an abundance of good wine is a sign of God bringing things to their conclusion. The beginning of the end times, and of creation being restored to its original glory. That's where Jesus came in. The quality of the wine Jesus produces is reflected in the quality of the wine and clothes described in the final celebration of Revelation 19 that we heard earlier. Jesus not only bridges the Old Testament prophecies to the new, but by providing an amount of wine that far surpasses the guest expectations, he signals the abundance of God's grace freely given through him. Having this miracle as his first indicates that his ministry to begin the work of restoring God's kingdom has begun. As for the steward failing to notice what had happened, well, ensuring the guests kept, were kept well fed and watered would certainly have been the forefront of their, of their mind. Any hint of the guests grumbling or questioning the feasts and celebrations would have been a big hit to the social status of the groom, a big faux pas. The degree to which this would have played on the steward's mind is indicated by the stone jars in which the water and wine were kept. Stone jars were the most expensive and prized container because they were far better than pottery jars or other containers at preventing the contents being contaminated. Their ability to keep things pure meant that, as indicated in our reading, they were used for the Jewish purity rituals. 
and in the case of domestic use indicated people of high social status. These weren't cheap. And being a house of high social status, taking notice of the servants was not something the wedding guests would have done. Yet again, Jesus turned expectations upside down and showed his true self not to those of power and wealth, but to those amongst the least. You might be asking, like I was, so what? What relevance does this passage, this miracle, have for us today? It's not like we can have big parties or celebrations in, our, in this time of lockdown. Elaine and I this week, we couldn't celebrate our wedding anniversary by throwing a party or going to a fancy restaurant. We had a, a, a lovely takeaway instead, and it was great. But it wasn't what we had planned. The line that jumped out as I was sitting and praying with today's Bible readings was, the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who, draw, who had drawn the water did know. I know that at my wedding, the last thing we were looking out for was someone performing a miracle beyond bringing Elaine and I together. Our focus then, and this week, was on celebrating our marriage. And so, by all means, call me biased, but I think we can excuse the bridegroom and the guests from not picking up on the miracle. But the steward? Even with the pressure of the wedding feast, if they had been fully alert to the things going on, then surely they would have realised that such an amazing thing had happened. And that's the point being alert to the blessings that are around us. Can you imagine what would have happened if the steward, the bridegroom and the guests had picked up on what the servants had witnessed? The wonder and the celebrations would have gone sky high. Not only was there a wedding to celebrate, but this miracle had happened and had happened in their midst yet they hadn't noticed it. When we notice or remember when we have been blessed by something, however big or small it may be, our hearts are lifted. Any darkness surrounding us is diminished by Christ's light from, all, from whom all blessings flow. You may know the famous doxology from several hymns, most famously, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Right now, we need to notice all the blessings around us. And there's a tradition which helps us to do that. The examine. The examine is a prayerful reflection from the Ignatian tradition that helps us to review the day and to notice God's presence and blessings in our lives during that day. It isn't about ignoring the difficult things from the day, but it is about helping ourselves to focus on the good, to focus on how God has moved in and between us. And in doing so, we are drawn closer to God, closer to the light, closer to the joyful content to make each day something to give thanks for, something to lift our hearts in difficult and good times. The quality of our sleep is affected by the day that precedes it. And if our mind is troubled, if we are anxious or unsettled, then our sleep can be too. But if our mind is settled and content, perhaps even in a state of joyful rest, then our sleep may be too. So it's no wonder that the most common time of the day to do or to try the examine is like Compline shortly before going to bed. 
but reviewing our day or even part of it is not just something about finding peace and about getting a good night's sleep. When we take time to seek where God has moved and blessed our lives, we begin to notice more and more blessings. We begin to notice the richness, the beauty and the joy of the, that the difficult, anxious, stressful or busy times can hide from us. If you're interested in trying the examine, and I certainly recommend it, then there are several ways you can try it. You can take yourself through it by through all the steps, and there's only about five, of reviewing the day. Or you can have someone to guide you through the review. Personally, I prefer having someone to guide me through the process, and I generally use a website or smartphone app called Pray As You Go, or the Northumbria community's website or album. But there are more ways than these, and I'll put some links in the web to the websites in the description below our service today to help you like me to explore different ways of doing the examine. I wonder if the steward at the wedding did something like the examine once they had finished for the day. John doesn't tell us, but I imagine if the steward did review his day, they might well be kicking themselves a bit before deciding to follow, I hope, the source of the miracle before deciding to follow Jesus and not miss out on the blessings this man from Nazareth was giving out. May none of us miss out on the joy that we can receive from noticing the blessings that God gives us. Amen. So with Andrew's words to reflect on, let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Liz Thorne from St Mary's will lead us in our intercessions. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray today for the many churches throughout the land that are closed. We bring before you all the congregations who cannot meet for worship and give thanks for those with the technological skills to bring services into our homes. We remember especially those who cannot share in virtual meetings and ask that you be with them as they struggle with their isolation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, the medical situation at the moment creates both hope and concern. We thank you for the dedication of all our medical staff, both those working in hospitals as they cope with the huge challenges of so many very ill people, and also those who have put their expertise into developing, producing and delivering the vaccines. We can see a brighter future now, but still need your help and strength to get through these dark times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord Jesus, carer of children, we pray for our young people as their lives continue to be disrupted. We are thankful for the selfless work of teachers and all school staff, and we see your spirit at work as people give laptops to help those in more needy families. We ask especially for your protection for children in abusive or neglectful situations and pray that they may find the support they need to be safe. Be a real presence, we pray, for young people whose exams and college courses are affected and help those in charge of the education system to work out fair methods of assessment for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Saviour Jesus, a key part of your ministry was to heal the sick. We ask that you may continue to work through those who care for the ill and frail, to bring your healing presence to them. We remember especially those suffering from the coronavirus and those whose medical needs are on hold at the moment. In a moment of silence, let us pray for those personally known to us. We also bring Philip and Lizzie Hawthorne before God and trust that their recovery may be steady and lasting. We thank you for the unstinting work of Debbie and Andrew as they take charge of the benefice at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in faith especially Joan Cottrell, whose year's mind is at this time. We pray for the souls of Susan Hill and Eileen and Tony Stevenson, who all died recently, and for their families as they mourn their loss. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ has broken down the dividing wall that made us strangers to one another. He's made us one humanity, that God might be all in all. He is our life, our hope and our peace. Friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. We're going to sing together now.
as the grain once scattered on the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Friends, the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. We lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When, we tu- when they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for, strength, for sinners and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, By your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory. And we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation that they may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last with St Mary, St Stephen and all the saints to the vision of the eternal splendour for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. So rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. So draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died and now lives for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, broken for you and for me. Amen. blood of Christ shed for the sins of the world, for yours and for mine. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty Father, whose Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, may your people, illuminated by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth, for he is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. <coughs> and we pray together Father of all we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off you met us in your son and brought us home dying and living <coughs> he declared your love gave us grace and opened the gate of glory may we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the peace of Christ go with you wherever he may lead you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love now and always. Amen. Let's sing together now before our notices.
There are just uh, a few notices. Uh, firstly, it's lovely to be able to report that Philip and Lizzie are improving um, slowly. I did speak to Philip this week uh, and it was wonderful to do that. Uh, he's hoping to slowly come back to work in the next few weeks as he recovers his strength. Uh, this Friday <clears throat> at 3.15, uh, we're celebrating Tony and Eileen Stevenson's lives and saying goodbye to them in a joint funeral service. We hope to be live streaming it, uh, but you will need a link to join in. If you'd like to watch, uh, please do email myself or Andrew. <clears throat> That's Debbie or Andrew uh, at stephensbath.org.uk and we will forward a link to you when it's available. Our churches remain open for private prayer twice a week, St Mary's on Thursdays and Sundays from 10 to 4. Unfortunately, St Stephen's will be closed this week because of the funeral on Friday and the need to leave time between openings for it to self-clean. Later this morning at 11am on Sunday, that assumes you've watched this first thing on Sunday morning, uh, there will be a post-service Zoom. It's lovely to be able to uh, gather together to see each other and to be able to chat about the service, uh, about life in general, just to connect together once again. Uh, the link is on our, uh, St Stephen's website and it's also uh, on the email that I sent out uh, this weekend. If you're not on our alerts and you'd like to receive them, please do get in touch with me. Again, it's debbie at stephensbath.org.uk. There's uh, other th uh, things going on in the church. The church doors may be closed most of the time, but we can go digitally. So there is a Zoom uh, prayer service for the benefits on Monday morning at 9.30 as usual. Uh, there's morning prayer. Uh, each morning from 8 o'clock on Facebook and then YouTube and there is Compline on Wednesday evenings at 9 o'clock. All the details and all the links uh, again are on the St Stephen's website and in the emails. My thanks to uh, Rita, Liz and Andrew for all that they've done uh, to put this service together and for uh, all who've been involved in the service, however way, however, uh, whichever way that is, uh, and my appreciation and all of our appreciation to you. So one in heart and one in mind and empowered by the Spirit, go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.